Pot Limit Omaha Starting Hand Tiers. I made a very similar video with Texas Hold'em. So this video is going to do the same thing, except, as you may know, the major difference, way more hand combinations. So a few general concepts and parameters. The games I've been playing in have been deep stacked and a lot of action, so they go multi-way. So the general concepts from my previous video of position being more important, stack depth being more important, and in PLO you particularly have to worry about the shortest stack because then you have to worry about reopening the action and charging more draws. Poker is a situational game. That applies to Texas Hold'em, so you could only imagine what happens in Pot Limit Omaha, nine-handed with crazy action. Just put it on steroids. So the equities run very similar preflop. So a common mindset is, I have four cards, let me get in there. I can't be that big of an underdog. But the difference is in playability and nuttiness. Do not get married to your starting hand. That's true in Hold'em, so even more so in Omaha. It's a post-flop game. Many times you'll raise and get a bunch of callers with the prettiest hand you can think of, Ace, Ace, Jack, 10, double suited, and the flops, 4, 5, 6, and you check fold and move on to the next hand. The game is of full houses, flushes, and straights. The trickiest ones to play are those straights. When you're going to the flop so multi-way, a lot of times other people are going to be drawing to the same straight or have the same made straight. This is when I'm going to start talking about polarized equity versus smooth equity. And the major difference, if you see in the top left corner, those are examples of a polarized hand. The ace-9-6-3 with the suit to the ace, it's a one-dimensional hand. You're looking for spades, and that's pretty much it. But if you hit spades, either with a draw when the board doesn't pair or flop a flush, you're going to have the nuts. And then anything else, you're going to fold. Very similar to the King King 7 Deuce. The 7 Deuce is basically unplayable. Again, you need the nuts, so unless it's 7 7 Deuce, you're not flopping the nuts with that. But when you hit a King, it's almost always going to be top set. You're not home free yet. Remember, it's a game of full house, flushes, and straights. You're probably going to need the board to pair. On the other side, top right corner, we have two hands that have a good smooth equity. So the 7 6 5 4 double suited. And the Jack-10, 9-8, single-suited. These hands kind of flop a little bit of everything. But a lot of times they're tricky to play in a multi-way pot because you're not drawing to the nuts. When you have spades come on the board, you have a 7 high flush. A lot of times you flop a pair in a gut shot, two pair in a gut shot, pair in an open-ender. When you go to flop so multi-way, it's much easier to play the hands on the left where you flop it all and you're willing to go all in. Or you flop nothing and get out of way cheap. Same thing in the video I talked about in Texas Hold'em. Those hands in the top right, a lot easier to play when you're in position. Because then you get to dictate the action. While the hands on the left, you don't have as drastic of a play difference in and out of position. Another concept I want to talk about is when you look at the bottom left hand. Ace, King, 7, 6, double suited. And you look at the bottom right hand. Same thing, ace, king, seven, six suited. The one on the left looks prettier because the ace and the king are connected. You can make a royal flush. Seven and the six are connected. You can make a straight flush. But the hand in the bottom right corner is actually better because it's suited to the ace and the king. Higher flushes have a much better chance of dominating lower flushes. It's not enough to make a flush. You need to make a higher flush than somebody else. So think about the easiest hands to make the nuts, and that's going to be big pairs and suited aces. The rundowns, like in the top right, are still good, but overrated in this environment because, again, you need to make the nuts, and a lot of times a jack-high flush is going to be very tricky to play. Those hands, paradoxically to some people, but they're going to play better heads up because the playability and the connectivity is very high when your head's up. You'll always have some amount of equity, and you could push around the polarized hands, like on the left, that have no idea where they stand, and they're not going to be able to put up with all the aggression on multiple streets. So multi-way, look for hands in the top left, 
But if you ever see aggression and you're about to get a heads up, the hands on the right are much better. So again, situational game, look for those changes. Probability of double suited hands, 13.5%. And look at all those hand combinations, a lot more than in Hold'em. Don't get trapped into the, oh, it's double suited, so I'm going to play it. Remember, hands go multi-way, so those double suited hands need to be to the nuts, so look for the ace specifically. My general strategy, again, we're playing nine-handed, and it's such a disadvantage to be deep stacked out of position. I'm essentially only playing huge hands in early position, and I'm actually looking to limp my entire range. My favorite play is the back raise. Look for aggressive players behind you to pot, and then people are call happy. And then when the action gets back to you, there's a lot of dead money, and then you could repot. Probability of pocket aces and two other random cards, 2.5% of the time. The most important hand to play. Kind of like the ace-king of Hold'em, either going to make or break you. If we look at these top 30 hands, the jack 10 9 8 is way up there when it's double suited. I just don't see that hand playing as well in my environment. But if you're playing with a lot of 3-betting and 4-betting and heads-up pots, then yes, that hand goes up in value. Hard to play with five people in the pot because somebody could have a better draw, and then somebody have a better made hand, and you have a three-way all-in, and you get the short stick. So first tier, A tier, the double-suited pocket aces. You can make top set with aces, and you can make two nut flushes. So three ways to make the nuts, even with the worst of those. The very best is when you have two other Broadway cards. Those are only 10 hands. Ace, ace, king, king. You can make top set twice, the nut flush twice, and the ace, king could make it straight, but not exactly what you're looking for. Other double suited four Broadway cards, double suited pocket kings, and a lot of times a king making top set is better than an ace because the ace you have to worry about multiple straight draws, the wheels and the Broadways. Aces still are, of course, better. Other double suited hands, the Jack 10 9 8. I would still consider that an A tier hand. Any three Broadways with the Ace, again, Ace being the key, double suited. Same with the Ace 10 9 8. So really connected double suited Aces. And then I would consider an Ace and a Broadway pair. And then any other card, another A tier hand. Single suited pocket Aces. You can make the nuts with an Ace and the suit to the ace. This, so little combinations, but still, unsuited pocket aces with two suited broadways, single suited pocket kings and two broadways. This total probability is going to be just over 2%. To me, these are the pure value hands to get in there with from any position. Playability-wise, these are my A-tier hands. These are the money makers. Percentage-wise, is close to the range of jacks plus and ace-king suited. Big chunk of them, the conditional probability of pocket aces, 62%. Next up, still quality hands, B-tier. We're moving down the pocket pairs, so we got double-suited pocket queens. Other double-suited hands that aren't quite as good as the A-tier. And now I'm considering any double-suited hand that is ace-high. Think of the best in this category of something like Ace-765 double suited, and the worst being Ace-95 deuce double suited. The connectivity adds because you have extra equity in draws or straight possibilities, but the main draw is that suited Ace. We have unsuited pocket Aces that have two suited cards, like Ace-Ace-85, or you have Broadway cards that connect with the Ace. These would be better than some of the A-tier hands if you're all in preflop. Other single-suited pocket kings that aren't as good as some of the A-tier ones. Some other single-suited hands, like four Broadway cards, the ace with a pair of Broadway, but not double-suited. This probability is similar to middle pocket pairs, ace-queen plus, and suited Broadway hands. See there, almost 7%. 
Now the conditional probability of what a bunch of these hand types are is the double suited ace. So to me, the big money makers, simply put, would be pocket aces and double suited ace. Now we're getting to the C tier of playable hands. So when you get more in late position, or if your field is pretty weak and not putting a lot of pressure on. Double suited pocket jacks. Still have a decent pocket pair that could make top set. Decent flushes. Other double suited hands that have decent connectivity or are middling pocket pairs. Rainbow pocket aces. So these are very one dimensional hands. You flop an ace, you're willing to put the money in. If not, you gotta get out. A lot of times, a lot of mistakes, people don't take into account how many players see the flop. And they kind of feel the pot's owed to them because they have pocket aces. With these types of hands, and with aces in general, I go along with two strategies of extremes. I either want to be deceptive and have nobody expect to have aces, essentially set mine with these hands, or try to back raise or get all the money in preflop because they really lack playability postflop, especially multi-way. And a lot of times people put you on aces, so when an ace flops, you won't make much money. Here's some unsuited pocket kings. We have other single-suited pocket queens and some other single-suited hands right here. And again, the king, queen, jack, 10, it's single suited. So of course it'd be better with the king, but for simplicity, I categorize it the same as if it was suited to the jack. I gave some special credence to the queen, queen, jack, jack offsuit. You could make top set with the queen or the jack. Pocket pairs that are connected like this are better in multi-way pots because when you hit a straight, you're very likely to actually scoop it and be the only one drawing to that straight. This tier is similar to small pocket pairs. Offsuit broadways and suited aces and suited connectors. We're getting to a decent amount of percentage now. This is about 20% of hands in total. But these 10% here, I would play in later position only. The conditional probability of a good single suited ace in this tier, 75%. Theme of the video hands that play well and are simple to play in these multi way pots, particularly deep stacked as the ones I am playing at least. Big pairs, suited aces. Big part of PLO that is very, very important, position. You should be playing around the same percentage of hands, theoretically, at least I think. But you have to stagger it by position. An example would be, you could play 50% of hands if it gets folded to you on the button and hold them. In Omaha, you might be able to play 80%. But in hold them, 10% of hands from under the gun. Think about in PLO, you might have to do five or six. Double suited pocket tens, you're mostly looking to hit that set, but you do have some flush potential, which will be a lot easier to play when you're in position because you're not drawing to a high flush. Some other double suited hands, so the pocket pairs get a little lower, the connectivity gets a little worse, and now instead of the double suited with the ace, you have it with the king. Instead of rainbow aces, you get rainbow kings, unsuited pocket queens, two suited or Broadway cards. We get single suited pocket jacks with that special credence to the jack jack 10 10. Other single suited hands. To me, these are bad single suited aces. Total probability similar to and hold them with baby pocket pairs, weaker offsuit Broadways, and other weaker suited Broadway gapper hands. Now the conditional probability, instead of a good single ace, it'd be a bad single suited ace. This right here. F tier, in my opinion, of just hands you should be playing on the button. Double suited pairs. The pairs are pretty weak. The connectivity is pretty weak, and it's very low. Other double suited hands. People's favorite in terms of smooth equity distribution like the 7654 but that gets you in a lot of trouble in multi-way pots other rainbow pocket queens mostly a one-dimensional hand one level down with jacks but you have some backup tens with a little bit of backup and some other single suited hands that are mostly one-dimensional 
or a lot of middling hands. Here are just some rainbow hands that are either paired, decently connected with high card value. This probability is similar to weaker aces and weaker suited hands. If you're on the button specifically, you can look to get in. This is the only one that's not really a nuttish hand. A lot of these F-tier hands are middling. So they have decent pairs, decent connectivity, have a suit, something like that. And will be very tricky to play when you're out of position. So be disciplined and only look to play these hands when you're on the button. Remember just those top 10 hands. Those will give you the general idea of what hands to play. Multiple ways to make the nuts. That's the number one thing. Connectivity is secondary. Unless you're playing a heads up pot. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.